Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Momo stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Momo is an app for friends and strangers to message each other. The company is headquartered in Beijing, China and was founded in 2011. It went public in 2014 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. People also use the app to meet and date other singles. Some people play single and multiplayer games within the app. Momo offers paid memberships. It's usually around $2 per month, but it can vary in prices. The app has over 100 million active monthly users. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company. 2.9 billion market cap. They're trading at $14 a share and they have 208 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and pretty consistent free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also positive and consistent. Revenue is a sales for the company and that doubled from 2017 to 2019. It dropped a little in the trailing 12 months. The easiest way to value a company is if they have positive and consistent numbers, which this company does. This is the company's income statement. All the numbers are in Chinese Yuan and I converted them to US dollars in my Excel spreadsheet. If you want to know the number in US dollars, just divide by seven. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. That peaked in 2019. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income, which also peaked in 2019. Their operating income in the trailing 12 months was lower than 2018 with higher revenue. That implies that they're less efficient in the trailing 12 months when compared to 2018. Below that is their interest payments. And they do receive a lot of interest income from their investments. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. That's been growing from 56 million to 80 million. Below that is other income and expenses, which is usually impairments or write-offs. Then their pre-tax income and their taxes. Below that is earnings from equity interest. This is its earnings from its investments in other companies. The bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is positive each year, around two and a half billion to three billion yuan a year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. They generate a good amount of cash flow each year. It was the highest in 2019. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And this company has a lot of free cash flow left over each year. And in 2018, they issued a lot of debt, 6.7 billion yuan. They paid off 2 billion that year. When a company has a lot of free cash flow like this company does, it generally does not issue a lot of debt unless it's to acquire another business. Let's look at the capital structure. $2.1 billion of equity, $700 million of debt. They're 74% equity, 26% debt. Their net debt is negative 900 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $900 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 11.5% and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that 6.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6 billion. We divide that by 208 million shares. 
and we get a calculated stock price of $28. They're trading at $14, so they're trading at a 50% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at $24 a share. They're also saying the stock is undervalued. This company has really solid financials. Some investors feel investing in Chinese stocks is a bit risky. The way I reflected that risk is I increased the company's WAC. Even with a higher WAC, I'm still coming up with a stock price much higher than what it's trading at. Only one analyst priced this stock and their price is $15. Much lower than me, but higher than what it's trading at. You can see the stock price has really struggled recently. It looks like it peaked at about $50, but it's come all the way down to $14. It looks like from this chart, if you bought this stock five years ago, you'd be flat today. This company started paying an annual dividend in April 2019. They paid 62 cents a share. Now it's up to 76 cents a share. That's a 5.5% dividend yield. That's a really good dividend. The dividend yield looks so good because the stock price has come down so much. The way you calculate dividend yield, it's dividend payment over stock price. The lower the stock price, the higher the dividend yield. And the higher the stock price, the lower the dividend yield. They pay out 42% of their net income and 29% of their free cash flow. So they have a lot of money left over to grow the business. Their dividend yield is much higher than the average in the industry of 2.1%. The top 25% of the market pays a 3.6% dividend and they're much higher than that. But analysts are forecasting their dividend to go to 0% in the next three years. Their beta is 1.38, so the stock moves a little more than the market. The stock has gone down 37% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 48%. The 52-week low was 13, the high was 25. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average, so it's on a downtrend. About 4 to 5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 208 million shares outstanding, 144 million are on float, 69% are held by institutions, and about 2.5% of the shares are shorted. If you include dividends in the past year, this stock has really struggled, down 37%, while the industry is up 92%, and the market is up 69%. In the past three years, it's even worse. This stock is down 61%, while the industry and market are up a lot. And this stock is only up 30% in the past five years, while the industry and market are both up over 100%. Analysts are expecting the company's earnings to grow 11%, while the industry grows 19%, and the market also grows 19%. They're forecasting their revenue to grow 8%, the industry 16%, and the market 10%. Yan Tang, the CEO of the company, owns 19% of the shares. Then Renaissance, Overlook, BlackRock, and Arga Investments. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 7.7, .7, so investors are paying about $8 for $1 of earnings. That's a really good PE ratio. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 1.2. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 1.4. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 2.1 billion of equity, 1.4 billion of tangible equity, because they have 5 billion of intangible yuans on their balance sheet. Their return on invested capital is 29% and their WAC is 11.5%. That means their business is getting a 17% excess return. So this is a really profitable company. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 40, so they can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 18%, they have a great ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 4.8, so they can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are mostly cash of 11 billion yuan. And the company is well capitalized. They had half a billion of free cash flow, 1.4 billion of working capital, 
and a $158 million dividend payment. So they have $1.8 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Momo. And if Momo has a number in blue, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in everything. They have really good ratios. They do have a much lower market cap than average because their stock prices come down so much and the average is so high in this industry because there's some really big companies like Google and Facebook. To summarize, I have them trading at a 50% discount. The reason this stock is so cheap because a lot of investors are scared to invest in Chinese stocks. But if the stock price goes up like it should, you can make a really great return. I rank their free cash flow 6 out of 10, their revenue 6 out of 10, and their ratio is 10 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.